Is Israel prepared for a devastating earthquake? Not enough, according to a seismologist. Let's remember, look at this. This is the area of the Sinai, Egypt to the left, Israel above there. And on the top there, at one o'clock position, you can see the uh, Sea of Galilee. Let's remember, I've, I've not done too much on the geology of Israel, but I have found that the Sea of Galilee, right there on the top of that map, that round blue thing, is actually a volcanic crater lake. And uh, all the areas around that Sea of Galilee, remember, since antiquities and even the Roman times, the Romans loved their hot spring baths, well, all that area there is around the Sea of Galilee hot spring baths. Hot spring baths. And um, they're still there today. A lot of those are still there being used today by tourists. Uh, in the middle of the map, we have the Dead Sea, and all the way down to the 7 o'clock position is uh, the opening towards the Red Sea. And here we have another topographical map. At the 11 o'clock position, there you have the uh, Sea of Galilee, the crater lake. It's a volcanic crater. So, yes, this is the Transjordanian Fault, and um, there is our prophecies that this is going to be a big earthquake here. Now, over the years, Israel has invested in several projects intended to protect the country. Such was the case with the construction of bomb shelters in every new apartment block in uh, the Tama 38 initiative. Now, uh, er that an earthquake measuring 3.5 magnitude shook Israel yesterday, Sunday, and it forced many people in the north of the country into the streets. The epicenter of the quake was 16 kilometers away from the city of Tiberias, which is around, of course, the Sea of Galilee, which, as we said, is a crater lake of a volcano. It occurred just after a 3.7 magnitude earthquake hit Israel on Saturday night. Although no damages were reported, the incidents caused experts to consider the prospect of a major quake hitting the nation. Now, are these four shocks? So since we're talking about this uh, area, and we said we had uh, on the 22nd a 4.1 in the uh, Wakas Jordan area, just basically in the River Jordan. Then we had the Saturday night 3.7 and the 3.5 uh, just north towards the Sea of Galilee. So something is going on there. We're going to take a look at geodesy to see the deformation and movements as well. Now we do have a lot of modern construction, anti-seismic, uh, seismic proof buildings, but we do have a lot of very ancient construction here as well. So uh, these ancient construction sites obviously uh, would be in danger of major earthquakes. I highly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. So we keep in mind it's not just Jerusalem that has all these 2,000-year-old uh, buildings. Uh, there's, there are strewn, strewn all over Israel. But going back to the um, geologists, so although no damage reported, the incident caused experts to consider the prospect of a major quake hitting the nation. These could be... As we said, you know, the Mediterranean has been having over a year now major quakes, five, six magnitude. We know that the Aegean is inflating with magma, and we're going to take a look at geodesy here to see what's happening in Israel. Now, a probable scenario. A devastating quake occurs in Israel once a century, according to Dr. Itai Kurzan, seismologist at the Geological Survey of Israel, a public sector organization responsible for advising the government on all geoscientific issues. He says, we know of devastating earthquakes that occurred here in 1202 and earlier. We have historical documents that tell us about the collapse of mosques and buildings. More recently, we know about the 1927 quake that probably originated from the north of the Dead Sea. As we know, all that area is, of course, a fault line. So if you take a look at that, the fault line goes from the Red Sea up to, uh, towards the Dead Sea, up towards the Sea of Galilee. That's basically the River Jordan. The River Jordan, we, we know all rivers are fault lines. 
And if you extend this back, it goes into the area of the Great Rift Valley of uh, East Africa. So the uh, earthquake that has uh, been considered the most devastating in the area has been see that has seen in recent years with a magnitude 6.2 on the Richter scale. There were victims, 300 victims to that. Hundreds of others were wounded. So a plethora of buildings, of course, destroyed. Now, is Israel ready for a quake? A similarly destructive quake might occur in Israel again, and this is the reason Curzon says his country is getting ready for it. Well, the only way you can get ready for it basically is, you know, having, having earthquake drills. But as far as the old buildings are concerned, uh, you know what happens to old buildings. Now, he says it was some 20 years ago that Israel realized it needed to prepare itself for a potentially devastating earthquake, and it started taking measures in this regard. One measure was a build bomb shelters in every blue, uh, new block of flats that was built. Those are normally made of iron that's more flexible and does not break in the event of an earthquake, he said. Another solution was found that was called Tama 38 Project. It was passed into law in 2005, and the idea was that residents of old buildings would allow private contractors to build extra apartments on their top roof, on their rooftops, in exchange for strengthening the foundation of the residents, something that would protect them against earthquakes. But in reality, the ambitious project has faced numerous challenges, the main one being an enc to encourage private contractors to invest in the periphery, home to millions of old residential buildings, for construction companies investing millions of dollars in areas with low purchasing power did not make sense, and that left people in the surrounding neighborhoods more exposed to the dangers of nature, geology that is. He said, there are many towns and cities in Israel that sit on the vicinity of the Dead Sea Fault, such as Safad, Tiberias, that means around Galilee, and many others. If anything happens, they will be the first in line to be damaged. Now, the quake alert system, like what they have in California, to avoid that, in the past decade, Israel started investing in yet another project, an earthquake early warning system that has been successfully working in Japan since 2007. The way it works is that the system recognizes the first waves of the earthquake and sends an alert to relevant bodies while the most devastating tremors are still on their way. The system is automatic and it becomes operational, connecting to the distribution capabilities of the Home Front Command and the IDF, similar to the rocket alert, and once the alert is issued, the public is instructed to evacuate, but their success in doing so will largely depend on the proximity to the epicenter of the quake, of course. The project has already cost Israel some $13 million, and it will become operational in a few days on March, March 1st, but Kurzan says it's far from being enough to protect the country. He says, in Japan, they did both. They have been using this system, and they have also been bolstering the foundations of their buildings. Over there, it's easy to convince the taxpayers that both these measures are needed, as the threat of earthquakes is imminent. He says, in Israel, however, we have other challenges, such as the tunnels of Huma Hamas, and the urgency, uh, uh, urgency here is different. We need to make tough decisions on where to direct our money. Kruzan is not optimistic that this policy will change soon, but he says Israel still has the ability to salvage the situation. He says we need to invest more in the periphery and strengthen their structures. We need to encourage private developers to do so, and we need to train more engineers who specialize in earthquakes, something that we are lacking at the moment, and we still have a long way to go, he says. Let's take a look at geodesy now to see what's happening there. Here we are on Sizemore, Berkeley, and these are the uh, earthquakes. This was uh, Saturday, 4.1, and uh, the other one was 3.7 on... Okay, this was Saturday, sorry. Yeah, this, this was uh, yesterday, Sunday. Okay, so we have 4.1, 3.7, and uh, this is the Sea of Galilee, as we can see here, right there. Let's go into this so we can see the details of the aerial oh no let's go we'll pull out so we can see the the transjordanian let's put in the tectonics and the fault lines right there okay 
And uh, there you go. Okay. It doesn't show it, but it's around here. That, that's it right there, Transjordanian, that, the Transjordanian, and this is the, uh, uh, Rift, the Great Rift Valley. So you can see that it's of the Saudi Arabian, the Saudi Arabian, the Arabian plate, uh, and pulling in. This is all inflating as we saw in the past Aegean earthquake areas. This is the, the volcanic arc of Greece, Hellenic arc, and let's pull in a little bit again. Okay, and going to the aerial. All right, this is it right here. The Sea of Galilee. Let's go in a little bit more. As we said before, that's a volcanic lake from one of the past um, videos of the few I have on, on Israel geology. And all of these here are uh, hot spring baths since antiquity. All these here. Tiberia, that's Tiberius. Okay, this is in Greek because I'm in Greece. Lake Kinneret, okay. And um, all these are hot spring baths. Okay. Going back, and that's where the uh, River Jordan flows out of. Ariel, okay. Can't really see it, but it's, it's this line here. One more. Okay, there you can see that right there, right? It's not very big, but there it goes. Okay, there it goes, there it goes. Okay, that's the River Jordan. As we said, that's a fault line. Topographic. Okay. Um, let's go to our geodesy now to see what's happening there in Israel to see what the movement we have around the, the Sea of Galilee. Right there. There, Tiberius, Sea of Galilee, Lake Tiberius. They don't have too many GPS stations there. Let's take this one. That's not good at all. But it's going northeast. It's going northeast. Let's take this one. Yeah, that's a better one. It's going northeast. Some uh, inflation, deflation. It's steady there. Let's take one going a little bit more south. Well, let's take one around here, Canaan, the wedding of Canaan, Nazareth, the area of Nazareth. Okay, that's going northeast and uh, is basically seasonal. And let's take some of these here. They don't have very very many GPS stations, unfortunately. Again, that's going northeast. And that's really inflating. That's going northeast and that's inflating. Going northeast and inflating, deflating, inflating. It's a lot of activity there. Okay, pulling out again. Okay, let's take this one. Going northeast and a lot of activity there. Let's take one near Jericho. Northeast and inflating. And let's go towards Jerusalem, northeast, really inflating. Jerusalem is really inflating. Okay, that's the Dead Sea right there. Let's take one around. Um, Hebron doesn't have one. Okay, let's take one here, northeast, and inflating. So you can see that uh, a lot of these here, let's take this one. That's not good. Okay, take this one, and that's steady. But around Jerusalem, we see that they're inflating. Let's take one around here. That's inflating as well. Rahat, let's take one near Ashkelon as well, right there. Okay, that's inflating too. So you can see a lot of these areas are inflating. Uh, there's earth changes here. They're heading uh, northeast and they're inflating. So that's what's happening in Israel. Surprise uh, earthquakes. Surprise earthquakes. And let's pull out here. Okay. And these are still ongoing here. Okay, these are 
these are still on, I'm not surprised these are still ongoing we even have a lot of these in um, Atlas Mountains in Morocco okay so uh, all of you there please be very careful and of course uh, everyone around we have a very bad snowstorm all over we're snowed in here in uh, in Greece uh, it looks like uh, very big snow snowstorms in the U in the US in, in New York in Canada where you used to live Montreal very very unusual for Athens so that's it with uh, the Israeli geology something is going not on there the geologists uh, are trying to get things prepared because what every 100 years they get a big one so please leave your comments thank you for your support